Unlike this, the original IBM PC, the new Amstrad is what's known as a full 16-bit machine. What does that mean? And come to that, what is an 8 or a 32-bit machine? Well, the number refers to the processor at the heart of the machine and how many bits of information it can handle at once. So we have 8, 16 and 32-bit processors. Now, you might expect that a 32-bit processor would be twice as fast as a 16-bit, and a 16-bit twice as fast as an 8-bit. But although there is a speed increase, there's also a snag. Whatever the processor, it will need to get data from the memory. And that data has to travel along wiring, which is known as a data bus. Now, for 8 bits of data, you'll need 8 tracks on your data bus. And if we look at this printed circuit board, there are a few chips, turn it over, and sure enough, there is the data bus, those eight tracks really do exist. So, information can travel to the processor eight bits at a time. Well, you'll find an eight-bit data bus like this on the BBC, the Spectrum, Commodore 64, Atari 800 and so on, all the high street favorites. Now, you'd expect a 16-bit processor to have a 16-bit bus. Yes, well, true 16-bit machines do. And as this graphic shows, one tick of the computer's clock a full, bits, a full 16 bits of information can travel to or from the processor. But 16 tracks makes all the circuitry very much more complex. So some machines, like the original IBM PC, actually cheat a bit. These are the so-called pseudo 16-bit machines, which have only an 8-bit bus. Now, of course, this creates a serious bottleneck of information. It slows the machine down. The processor now needs two gulps of that data to get the 16 bits it needs. So, a true 16-bit machine with a 16-bit bus will be very much faster. That helps to explain the relatively high speeds of, let's say, the Olivetti M24, the new Amstrad clone, the Nimbus and so on, compared with the IBM PC. Now, a 32-bit processor similarly could have a 32-bit data bus, like the expensive Compaq. But equally, you could have a 16-bit data bus. Cheaper, but you pay the price in performance. Now, you get this in machines like the new Atari and Commodore models. And, would you believe, you can even get a 32-bit processor with a grotty little 8-bit bus. And, obviously, that now needs four gulps to get the information to the processor. In fact, this was one of the disappointing features of the ill-fated QL, which could chew rather more than it bit. Who was the QL aimed at? Well, <coughs> the thinking was that... Um, the marketplace had developed to the point where there'd be a huge market in serious machines. Now, I think that we got it wrong at that stage, and I think that Atari and Commodore have similarly got it wrong uh, in terms of market size, not in terms of the machines not being good. The truth is that 8-bit machines can do everything that people want at the moment, perhaps, more or less, and um, we've yet to discover ways to put 16 or 32-bit machines to use uh, the, in a way that makes sense to the public. For the average home micro-owner or small businessman, Sir Clive may well be right. 8-bit machines are perfectly good and they're cheap, but they really can't work fast enough and they can't handle enough memory for serious business software.